Boom. Good morning and welcome everybody to the Crypto Mining Show, your one-stop shop for all cryptocurrency news from the perspective of a cryptocurrency miner. I'm the host and I go by Blind Run on the internet and Matthew in real life. Today, we're going to be talking about, well, more mining stuff, of course, but that's going to include some non-mining content. As always, we're going to be talking about cryptocurrency exchange. Crypto.com is expanding. That's good news in this current market. We're going to be talking about Celsius changing their business model from banking the unbanked to becoming a mining-focused company. Then we're going to be talking about some crypto mining and staking firm Foundry starting some training programs for miners, which is really interesting. And the RTX 4090 being two times as fast as the or the 4090 twice as fast as the 3090 in control which is pretty cool flex titan nodes beta going live on july 20th varus coin has released an ethereum bridge which is crazy and then we're going to start things off covering basically a mess up i made that i think basically translated into y'all making a mess up and the fake anetta angels we're going to get into all of this after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs quickly while earning up to 8% cash back. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options, including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services, including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. All right, welcome back, everyone. So, first things first, Aneta Angels is basically an NFT project on the Ergo blockchain that promises miners in the future during phase three with a get a mining pool called GetBlock to include additional rewards while you're mining on the smart pool for your Neta payouts. And this sounds all great and fine. Now they had a minting process that I went through and we actually did that live on the stream. So I do have an official angel, but I also have a fake angel. And I also realized that what ended up happening is I was telling everybody to go to ergoauctions.org, which was, to be fair, the first auction house for Ergo as far as NFT marketplaces go. And there are legitimate NFTs over there. However, there are not any legitimate Aneta angels over there. And I'm going to show you guys kind of the difference here. There's a really easy way to tell. And the really easy way to tell is going to be in the name on the on the actual NFT itself. So if we go to our desktop here, you can see I have them pulled up. These are called Aneta angels. So this is going to be the easiest way to tell. There is contract uh, number, minting number that you can check as well. But the actual Aneta Angels that are being sold are being sold on skyharbor.io. So I'll link this to you guys down below in the description. There's one that says bad angels and one that says good angels. And this is the one that you're looking for. And the key difference is that it'll just be called Aneta and then the number. Now, obviously, the price is much higher here too. So you got to keep that in mind as far as that was high to low or low to high recently listed but okay so you can buy these over on sky harbor right now and they are going up in price but these are the ones you're looking for if you were looking for them i want to make that very clear and it, basically give you guys an apology for being in live stream on twitch etc and people asking where i can i get them and just saying ergo auction house and then not realizing essentially that pretty much as far as angels are concerned I don't see any legitimate valid angels uh, here at all. So, um, yeah, apologies for that, telling you to go over there when there are no real ones over there. Sky Harbor was the the partner with Aneta on this particular one, so this is the actual legitimate project. 
and you got to be careful. Now, it doesn't mean that Ergo Auction House won't get angels listed, right? Like I can go list my angel on Ergo Auction House, no problem, because the NFT will come over here. Like I said, the key difference that you can tell, though, is the, in this name being Aneta Angels and the number. So someone is releasing these over here. Support tickets getting opened up um, over on Ergo Auction House would be ideal if you guys can head over there, say, hey, you know, we noticed that basically this is a fake version of the Aneta Angels. Here's the real minting address, which you can come over here and get the mint address by clicking it on the Sky Harbor one and grabbing that right there. So there you go. That's pretty much just straight up. I'm going to suggest anybody during my live streams to go to Sky Harbor. I'm going to make sure we link the specific uh, the specific page for it as well because, you know, there could be bad ones that end up over here. I don't think so because I think it's a little more curated if you look at like Sky Harbor as far as like the way they, they curate their list. So I think it's going to be a lot safer. But I think if you did go to, you know, let's just double check and make sure if you did a search. Okay, if you do a search, it does look like these all come up right because you can see the Aneta and the number. But just be very careful. If it says like under the number Aneta Angels, that's for sure wrong. And then just make sure from the main page that you check the mint address on any of the ones that you're purchasing, right? So you can uh, click in, let's see, grab the token page. We'll get all this information tomorrow. So there you go. Just want to make sure that we got that covered. Now, we do have exciting news from Veriscoin. They have launched an Ethereum bridge. Um, now, Veris is one that I've been CPU mining for quite some time. Right now, I'm actually CPU mining a different project. But I have a ton of Veris, which is super cool. Uh, because they now have an Ethereum bridge. And obviously, interoperability is something that's big in cryptocurrency. And being able to bridge between networks, especially smaller networks with larger networks like Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain or whatever it may be, is always big news. So keep your eye out on Veriscoin because they do now have a Ethereum bridge at ethbridge.veris.services. And you can basically choose to convert. Um, and these, I think right now, are all in testing. So... Um, I just wanted to give you guys the update on this getting launched as far as on the test network. It, it's not going to work yet, right? But I think this is something that's going to be pretty big for the price of Varus. Maybe not huge, right? Not like a, a huge price bump like you would see if they partner with a big exchange like Coinbase or something like that. But any, any interoperability between a smaller chain and a larger chain <clears throat> kind of in the pipeline... It's going to be fantastic. Once it's available off of the test network, I will test it. We'll do a video on it. Basically, probably be called something like cashing out Varus coin or something along those lines. And we'll get you the update uh, there. So I wanted to announce that they have that coming in the pipeline and I'm pretty excited for it. The MCT oil is getting to me if you can't tell. <coughs> mm. But... It is good for you. Get a sip of coffee and let's talk about Flux. Flux Titan Nodes beta goes live on July 20th. This will be probably pretty big in the news as well. Titan Nodes are finally here. On July 20th, the Titan Node beta goes live for the public. Those looking to support the Flux network by staking their Flux in a Titan Node. <coughs> Excuse me can do so for as little as 50 flux. The Titan nodes will bolster the flux network with enterprise grade computational nodes, leveraging Lumen Technologies infrastructure. Titan also introduces proof of useful stake, a solution to some of the inherent flaws of proof of stake. Great, hair, great care has been taken to make a decentralized, secure and sustainable staking platform for our flux community. 
Welcome Titans. The beating heart of Flux is the massively powerful decentralized network consisting of more than 12,000 computational nodes. An immensely powerful network is operated by thousands of individuals and is wholly decentralized. There is nothing else quite like it and is exactly what the Web3 infrastructure tech stack def desperately needs right now. The recent crash of several DeFi and lending protocols has highlighted the importance of decentralization and trustless systems. Without decentralization, the shared dream of crypto enthusiasts to build a viable alternative to centralized finance institutions will not survive. Flux will continue to carry the banner of decentralization and provide enterprise-grade decentralized infrastructure to all projects and businesses seeking to mitigate the inherent risks of centralization. Fortunately, the decentralized infrastructure that Flux is building has never been stronger. The network continues to grow even with the current less than optimal market and macro conditions. Momentum is set to pick up even more as we have now arrived at another milestone development that will enable further growth and adoption of Web3. We are happy to announce that our shared Titan nodes are going public on July 20th with the launch of the Titan beta. Titan nodes are powerful Stratus tier flux nodes operated by experienced flux node operators. The Titan nodes leverage Lumen Technologies infrastructure to create a, and powerful hosting solutions for enterprise clients. They mark a key development milestone in the flux and Lumen partnership and will play a vital role in onboarding enterprise clients onto Web3 infrastructure, but it's not just established providers helping out with Titan. To keep things decentralized, community providers have stepped up and stood up servers for Titan and to celebrate their efforts, we will launch the Titan beta with servers running on community providers hosting, such as hostnodes.online and servers provided by a long-standing community member, Driggs, or J Riggs. To participate, all you need to have uh, is or all you need is to have 50 flux in the official Zelcor wallet for the minimum Titan collateral. Via Zellcore, you will be able to lock your flux in a 3, 12, or 3, 6, or 12 month stake and participate in a shared Titan node on Flux OS Marketplace. After this time, you will have your collateral unlocked along with your staking rewards. You also have the option to auto renew your stake. The Titan nodes will then auto compound your original stake and rewards. The Titan nodes are collateralized by shared staking, thus creating a shared node and staking program. When Flux holder locks their stake up in a Titan program, they are not only passively earning Flux, but they are also supporting the Flux network by standing up new nodes and in infrastructure. The staked amount stays in a secure multi-signature node wallet address and is simply locked in that specific wallet while staked. Flux is always dedicated to creating new and better solutions for blockchain that emphasizes decentralization and empowerment. And the Titan shared staking program aims to solve two major issues plaguing blockchain staking currently. The first major problem of staking involves the security of the staked funds. In most secure staking solutions, whether it involves a centralized exchange or a DeFi protocol, the staker usually has to trust a centralized actor while the stake is active. This creates a lot of risk for the person staking their assets as the other party might lose or keep the staked assets. When you're staking on an exchange, what will happen to your funds if the exchange goes bankrupt? What will happen if you send your funds to a DeFi pro pool if it gets hacked or exploited? You most likely lose your funds. With Titan shared nodes, your staked flux is securely kept in a multi-signature node wallet while staked, staying decentralized on the blockchain as it should be. The second problem is related to the economics of staking. There are two pitfalls in this regard. The first relates to letting a centralized actor stake on your behalf. When you stake funds on exchange versus through your own wallet, the exchange will usually collect the lion's share of the staking rewards for themselves and give less than optimal profits for the staker. The other pitfall is unsustainable tokenomics and yields. This is a critical flaw of proof of stake, sadly. We have seen many examples of this recently. If staking is simply a high APY money printer with no value being created behind the scenes, then it is unsustainable and can lead to the collapse of the asset involved. With Titan, Flux has developed proof of useful staking. The Flux being staked in the Titan is used to stand up computational node infrastructure that creates value for the Flux network. 
The Titan nodes do work for the Flux network by hosting decentralized applications with those applications being required to pay hosting fees. This mechanism ensures that the stake produces value and interacts with the Flux economic model in a sustainable way. The Flux team put a lot of effort into building a decentralized, secure, and sustainable staking platform. Great care has been taken to try and use this opportunity to address some of the inherent flaws of other staking solutions. But there is one important detail. Flux needs to take care of the loyal miners who secure the network. When collecting staking rewards, there is a one Flux fee. Half of that fee will be distributed to the Flux miners. For every stake collection transaction in a mine block, 0.5 flux will go to the mining pool or solo miner who mine that block. For example, if there are 10 Titan claiming transactions in a block, then that block receives a total of reward bonus of 5 flux. The other half of the claiming fees will go to the Flux Foundation to secure a future development of the Flux ecosystem. We hope you will jump in and enjoy our new Titan nodes. So be very careful. Obviously, anytime we see foundations, I get a little nervous just to be clear, but this is probably the best staking form I've seen to be, to be completely fair to Flux and their team, especially since it's going through, you know, basically a platform, the Zelcor wallet, which is going to, you're going to be able to control your own keys and that sort of thing. That's obviously super beneficial um, as opposed to having locked up in a centralized exchange. And it essentially allows you to do an investing in a node without actually having to set up a node and at a much lower cost, right? Your 50 flux instead of going in there and having to start with like a thousand flux or something like that. They go on to say, we look forward to many new community members joining our Titan node program. By doing so, they will help grow our decentralized network. Now more than ever, the world needs decentralization. Flux is dedicated to bringing more innovations to the blockchain, and we have many more exciting developments on the way, like proof of useful work, a sustainable and environmentally friendly GPU mining algorithm, persistent storage, Flux OS developments, parallel asset snapshots and distributions, and much, much more. Flux is fueled by community, so we invite you to come take a part. All are welcome. It doesn't matter if you're just interested in technology, an investor, a developer, or just like many, or just like to make crypto memes all day. Flux needs all kinds of people to participate in the decentralized future. You can check out their Discord, etc. Links down in the description for all of that. Once again, like the wrap up here is that you are going to be able to essentially stake some of your flux, but it's kind of funny because it's not really staking necessarily. It is actually going into a contract that then is going into a node, which is providing computational power to the network. And I think that is obviously like a more beneficial way of staking because you're not just processing those transactions. You're also providing some sort of computational uh, power to the dApps for, for lack of a better term right now we have shown you guys how to build like a v rising server on flux there are things that you are able to do on flux that you can't do on any other blockchain and you can do it you know as just someone with some limited docker experience which is way beyond anything else that's currently available when we're talking about web three and that is re really where they have their strong point now i would still put them in more of a tech focused uh, basket than into a decentralized cryptocurrency basket and by that i mean obviously they have the foundation they have c levels you know they have that sort of like company structure and that means from a principled standpoint, I don't throw them in the bucket with Bitcoin. For example, I throw them in the bucket with Ethereum. You still there at the end of the day, what I mean to say by that is that you still have like a group of people you have to trust that are kind of steering the ship as opposed to trusting just a decentralized network of miners to maintain consensus and governance uh, with to maintain their own interests, right? Which is kind of like 
With Bitcoin, for example, since it is so many miners and they're going to vote on the changes and so on, it's a lot less likely that someone will go into the favor of just a few people. It has to go into the favor of many. Just want to make that clear, but obviously 50 flux, not that expensive. If you want to lock it up, you can do it. It's not financial advice or anything like that. And I think it is one of the better ways to do it uh, as far as from all the other ones that I've seen. We have a little bit of tech news. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card allegedly delivers over 160 frames per second in control with ray tracing and DLSS at 4K. It's two times the performance gain over the 3090. After the first synthetic result was shared, now an alleged gaming performance result of the GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card has been revealed, which shows a 2.2 times gain over the 3090 with ray tracing and DLSS enabled at 4K resolution. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card is going to be the green team's flagship offering for 2022. There have been various leaks and rumors around the card throughout the year, but from what we can tell, the launch is more or less expected around Q4 of 2022, with three to four months left in its launch. Now the rumors are shifting the focus from specifications to performance numbers. And you can see Hassan here tweeted 3090 in control with the same settings does 72 FPS on average. So that's a two times gain. While we heard about an alleged synthetic performance benchmark for the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 scoring almost two times the performance gain in 3D Mark times by Extreme Benchmark, now an alleged gaming benchmark has been shared by XPEA GPU on Twitter, which states that the graphics card is being tested and delivers over 160 frames per second in control at ultra with ray tracing and DLSS. Remember, DLSS does mean scaling. So if there's a new form of DLSS, it probably does have an extra performance advantage there. That means it's not raw rasterization performance. And that's important when we're looking at this from the mining perspective, because you need that raw like traditional rasterization performance gain for the actual gain in any mining algorithm, whether it be core specific or memory specific. So not probably a 2.2 times gain across the board with traditional rendering tasks compared to the R RTX 3090 in the high preset using ray tracing and DLSS, we get a score of up to 2.2 times. So if we're, were to run the previous flagship in the ultra preset, we are going to get up to a two and a half times gain, which is just ridiculously huge. Our benchmark also had the DLSS factor set to the quality preset, and we don't know what the alleged leak benchmark had DLSS set to. The quality mode prefers IQ over FPS, whereas the performance mode does the opposite and drops the IQ by a bit. So it looks like you're going, uh, or so it looks like you were looking at anywhere from two times to 50% higher performance for the RTX 4090, depending on the DLSS version that was used for the alleged benchmark. The RTX 4090 was expected to deliver to deliver two to two and a half times performance gain, but that was expected only in synthetic benchmarks. If the performance in gaming is also close to those figures, then Ada Lovelace can be one of the biggest performance jumps from the green team we have seen to date. Overall, if this result is true, then enthusiast gamers are definitely in for a treat with 4K gaming over 100 FPS becoming a reality. In similar news, Copite states that an AIB model of the 4090 graphics card can reach 20,000 points in Time Spy Extreme Benchmark. That will be an easy two times gain over the 3090 Ti and a 70 to 80% bump over the 3090 Ti graphics card, which is the current gen flagship. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card is expected to pow be powered by the AD102300 GPU, but it is only the TI variant that will feature the full chip. The 4090 will utilize a slightly cut down configuration. The 4090 will use 128 SMs. We've already gone over all this before. The big thing that we would look at, the memory specs, 
is still just going to be 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X clocked at 21 gigabits per second across the 384 bit bus, which means we get that same one terabyte per second of bandwidth uh, for the memory that the 3090Ti has. Meaning from the mining perspective, we probably aren't expecting any sort of bump in hash rate, especially in things like memory intensive algorithms, for example, ergo Ethereum. Now we may see, thanks to the boost in the core performance, uh, hash rates improve in things like Ravencoin uh, or any prog pal algorithm as well as maybe like flux and then some of the other outliers like ha uh, heavy hash with caspa and so on so there are still impro improvements on performance for some algorithms from core that could be relevant of course to mining that being said, we are looking at a new uh, power supply standard of ATX 3.0. So to prevent yourself from blowing up power supplies, you're probably going to need to upgrade your power supply. And you aren't going to be able to plug too many of these GPUs into a single miner. They're going to be very, very limited because, well, they require a ton of power all the way up to 600 watts at the top end. So be very careful with spikes way above that, right? So if you have multiple of the 4090s, plugged into a rig, you could spike out and just blow up a power supply, even one of your ATX 3.0 models. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, from a power perspective on those. That being said, crypto mining and staking firm Foundry starts training program for miners. DCG subs subsidiary Foundry is launching a training program for mining technicians. This is pretty crazy here. Look at these guys. What are they doing? They're, they're like testing airflow here. They're, 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 they're learning about mining. Digital asset mining and staking firm Foundry has started the Foundry Academy, a program to train and prepare technicians for the Bitcoin mining industry. Foundry is a subsidiary of Digital Currency Group, which is the parent company of Coindesk. A certifiable training course from a heavyweight like Foundry will give aspiring engineers a viable alternative to official training courses from Bitmain and MicroBT, the largest manufacturers for Bitcoin mining rigs. Bitmain is notoriously secretive and trainees have to keep all the training information confidential as per the terms of service posted on its site. MicroBT, on the other hand, offers free training and has posted training materials on YouTube. Foundry Academy's one-week program in Rochester, New York, where the company is headquartered, offers courses starting with Bitcoin fundamentals all the way to mining rig diagnostic and maintenance, according to a press release sent to Coindesk. The Academy's first cohort was in May, and the next training scheduled is to start on September 12th. Foundry will also leverage its connections in the industry to help graduates land jobs, according to the press release. Quote, after completing the academy, I feel that I received industry training that only Foundry could provide at this level. End quote, said Quinn Carr, a student of the first cohort of the program who now works for a publicly listed Bitcoin mining company. Now, obviously, when we're talking about the bear market and stuff like that, there are opportunities floating around that maybe you should consider and a week long training course in things like maintaining Bitcoin mining rigs may not be a terrible idea because that industry is continuing to grow and people are going to need technicians to make sure that those rigs are running and staying up. And that could put you into a position to work within cryptocurrency. And I'm even considering signing up for one of these week long deals. We would just have to figure out what we do with the crypto mining show while we do it, but maybe they would help us work around it. Who knows? That is pretty exciting though. And we can get some more insider information on how these large farms are run without necessarily having to go through someone like Bitmain. There are plenty of resources online. Uh, and then obviously if the program is extremely expensive, it's probably not worth it. I do not know pricing or anything at this time on it, but if it's something you guys are interested in, I'll definitely dig into it more and get more information for y'all. Now, Celsius lays out the mining focused reorganization plan at first bankruptcy hearing. This is an interesting one. The first day hearing revealed Celsius is betting big on its also indebted mining operation to help fill the $1.2 billion hole in the company's balance sheet. 
Crypto lender Celsius has half a million creditors owed more than $5 billion. Attorneys for the company said during its first bankruptcy hearing on Monday. News of Celsius's liquidity crisis broke on June 12th when the company announced it was pausing all customer withdrawals citing extreme market conditions. The company formally filed a Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the bankruptcy court of the Southern District of New York last week. The situation at Celsius is not unique. The lender is one of several that have been hit hard by the Terra Luna crash, the insolvency of Three Arrows Capital, and the ongoing market downturn. Struggling crypto lender BlockFi received a $250 million bailout from crypto exchange FTX in order to fulfill customer withdrawal requests and could be acquired by FTX for as little as $240 million more. Less than three weeks after Celsius halted its withdrawals, Voyager Digital followed suit before it also filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in SDNY on July 6th. Court filings paint a concerning picture for Celsius's creditors, most of whom are, are average in retail investors. The company has an enormous $1.2 billion hole in its balance sheet, and retail depositors who held their crypto in Celsius accounts will likely be the last to get paid. Chapter 11 bankruptcy, also called a reorganization bankruptcy, pauses any attempts at civil litigation from creditors and allows the company time to get its balance or finances in order to repay its debts. Documents filed to the Southern District of the company's law firm Kirkland and Ellis show that Celsius is deeply insolvent. Leading up to declaring bankruptcy, Celsius saw its digital assets holding dwindle to a mere $1.7 billion as of July 14th, down from $14.6 billion since the end of March. The documents also show that Celsius owes $4.7 billion to its customers, almost three times what it holds in digital assets. Celsius also holds $170 million in cash held in the bank, but the rest of the assets are tied up in mining equipment, $720 million worth, outstanding loans, $620 million worth, and other assets, about $450 million worth. The documents also somehow account for $600 million in the platform sell token, a much higher value than the total market capitalization of the coin. The sell token faces regulatory scrutiny by the SEC. The firm claims that all, most of the drop was due to the collapse in crypto prices, shrinking its assets by $12.3 billion. The rest of the loss is added up as users withdrew $1.9 billion from deposits up until June 12th, the date when the company suspended withdrawals. Loan redemptions and liquidations reduced the firm's assets by another $1.9 billion, and Tether, the issuer of the largest stablecoin USDT in the market, and also an investor in Celsius, set back the firm by an additional $900 million when it liquidated a loan to Celsius. And the firm also lost $100 million from investments. Here's the balance sheet. And then another document filed by the court listed the crypto lender's unanticipated losses to the business. Namely, the Ethereum staking platform StakeHound lost access to 35,000 ETH that Celsius deposited on the platform to earn a yield due to an alleged error by StakeHound's third-party crypto custody provider, Fireblocks. StakeHound and Fireblocks are currently involved in litigation over the matter. A private lender, reportedly the Indianapolis-based lending platform Equities First, failed to return the collateral of a loan Celsius paid off and owes $439 million to Celsius. Celsius admitted it also lost about $15.8 million in Terra's collapse, but the widespread and completely misleading Twitter and social commentary, as the company legal advisor said during today's hearing, prompted a run on its deposits in the first place. I mean, okay, <laughs> but you were failing without that, right? Monday's hearing, as well as a host of court documents, including a 61-page declaration from CEO Alex Mashinsky, indicate that much of Celsius' plans to recoup its costs or losses sorry, depends on heavily on the projected future profits of its half-finished, wholly-owned mining subsidiary, Celsius Mining. However, that mining subsidiary is also a debtor. Lawyers for Celsius asked the court on Monday to approve over $5 million in spending to finish the construction of the mining center in Texas, which Celsius attorneys said would take approximately two more months, as well as pay duties on mining rigs currently sitting with the customs authorities. 
Though Judge Martin Glenn, chief judge of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in the Southern District of New York, approved the request on an interim basis, the U.S. trustee, the arm of the Department of Justice that oversees administration of the bankruptcy cases, will ultimately hold the purse, uh, the purse strings. At Monday's hearing, Shara, uh, Shara Cornell, an attorney with the U.S. trustee program, voiced her concerns about the viability of Celsius's mining operation. There's one mining company that I don't believe is currently operable, but has caused the debtor a, a considerable amount of money. I'm not clear if construction may or may not be the best avenue for the debtor at this time, Cornell told the court. Why not just consider liquidating it and move on? And that's probably what they should do, right? You fail, you got to restart. I've done it. Celsius attorneys pushed back, claiming that Celsius operation already included more than 43,000 mining rigs with plans to reach 112,000 mining rigs sometime in Q2 of 2023. Pat Nash, Celsius's lead attorney, told the court that mining subsidiary was mining oper uh, approximately 14.2 bitcoins per day and expected to mine 10,100 bitcoins in 2022. If everything goes well in 2023, we hope and expect to be in a position to mine approximately 15,000 Bitcoin a day, Nash told the court. He presumably meant 15,000 Bitcoin in the entire year, as only roughly 900 Bitcoins can currently be mined per day. If Celsius promises to mine 10,100 this year are accurate, something that is difficult to in independently verify, at current market prices that would yield approximately 225 million, only a fraction of what is needed to make Celsius solvent. When Celsius begins to make good on its $5.5 billion in liabilities, $4.7 billion of which represents customer holdings, its customers will almost certainly be the last to get their money back. And by then, there might not be any money left. Celsius has set the stage for conflict between its customers and its sophisticated institutional investors. Daniel Gwynn, a business restructuring associate at New York-based law firm Ropes and Gray, told Coindesk. In particular, Celsius has pointed out its pleadings that customers transferred ownership of crypto assets to Celsius, making those customers unsecured creditors. This detail may undercut customer expectations who thought they were depositing their assets into a contract similar to a traditional bank, Glenn added. Nash told the court on Monday that Celsius has approximately 500,000 depositors, 300,000 of which have more than $100 worth of crypto in their accounts. Celsius attorneys asked the judge to redact names and other personally identifying information from Celsius's creditor matrix and other documents, citing Celsius employees and corporate creditors fear for their personal safety. These cases have generated a lot of press and social media commentary. Certain employees have been receiving death threats and hate mail, an attorney for Celsius told the court. We received certain communications from scheduled corporate creditors stating that corporate principals have been receiving death threats and hate mail as well. So the next steps are as follows. The second hearing for Celsius bankruptcy proceedings will be held remotely the morning of August 10th. The U.S. trustee is currently in the process of forming and appointing a committee of creditors. These committees are typically made up of seven of the largest unsecured creditors of the debtor and help oversee the bankruptcy proceedings, investigate the debtor's con conduct in business operations, and help the court formulate a reorganization plan of the company's debt. Oh, we failed at stealing your money and we spent it on mining rigs and now we want to continue to mine cryptocurrency. That seems like a pretty good way to get mining rigs, I suppose. Just kidding. Don't do that. But uh, that <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And like sometimes like when I look at the mining industry for Bitcoin, I do get disheartened, like disenfranchised with Bitcoin in general because the the entire basis of this channel was the average guy like middle class citizen of the united states sure which is still top one percent in the world but but that being said being able to essentially you know improve the position of their families by helping secure you know the blockchain for a decentralized new monetary system. It didn't mean that everybody had, or like individual people had to get extremely rich off of it. It just meant that everybody was able to participate in this pie. Uh, one of the reasons I lean on mining though in general is because, well, obviously in situations like this, mining has like some sort of a proven track record to generate revenue, 
while all of these other portions in cryptocurrency don't necessarily do that, right? You're just buying and holding or buying and hodling. And most of the time you see like, for example, with Celsius, them kind of pushing that hodl, but they're pushing that hodl to have you hodl with them. And you end up getting screwed as an investor because you're just like following all the memes of hodl. And I think like what I've talked about in this previous bull run, is some of the mistakes I made and the largest one being not moving a bunch to a cash position to be prepared for the bear market. And I think that that's, that is something to point out like this, this hodl mode uh, idea is not necessarily the best thing to, to pay attention to, at least in my humble opinion. Sure. Long-term, I think you're good, but you know, if you are trying to run a successful mining operation, I don't think that that is the path that you would take just a, a little bit of my two cents and what I've learned, but not financial advice, right? Because I'm not a financial advisor, nor have I been extremely successful all the time, but I'm learning and we're learning together. Cryptocurrency exchange, crypto.com expands to Italy. The company has completed its registration with the Organismo uh, Agenti e Mediatori, something like that. <laughs> hey, crypto.com has partnered or, or has garnered regulatory approval from the OAM, allowing the exchange to distribute its products and services to customers in that country, according to a press release. Its latest expansion step for Crypto.com recently won approval to operate in Greece. In June, obtained license in Singapore and in March, opened an office in Dubai. We are committed to building lasting growth in the region and will continue working with regulators to deliver a wide range of products and services to our valued customers, said company co-founder and CEO Chris Marzalek. Now they have been one of my favorite centralized exchanges for liquidating my crypto. And we're going to run that ad one more time, but I'd like to point out that it is great that they are growing when we see other platforms like Coinbase falling out of the top 10, falling down lower and lower, doing things like turning off affiliate marketing, because if you sign up down below and get a card, you get $25. I get $25. Everybody gets $25. And, you know, crypto.com is maintaining that uh, across this bear market so far. Things could always change. But I think that as far as like the track record goes for crypto.com versus Coinbase in this bear market, they've been kind of faring a little bit better than some of the others. Let's go ahead and run that ad. And then we're going to get into mining profitability for the day. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs quickly while earning up to 8% cash back. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. And we're back. So I have great news, everybody. I have had the first day over $100 a day in a month. And I'm super excited. Obviously, a lot of this has to do with the increase in price of cryptocurrency. Some of it has to do with, you know, essentially this reveal that Ethereum is moving to proof of stake in September more than likely. Some of it has to do with getting my rigs in line thanks to OctoMiner. So you guys should definitely check out OctoMiner. I do not have a coupon code yet, but you can use Red Panda Mining's coupon code if it's still available. So go check that out. Uh, their rigs are definitely helping me get the temperature under control. And I have more great news for my farm in general. So I'm excited. I realize like everybody else's position is going to be different, but I'll share it with you. I am getting free ventilation in my current area 
for now since they have been delaying my building so much and that is supposed to be installed this week. The current plan looks that, like it will drop the ambient temperatures down by 20 degrees uh, and that is going to significantly increase my hash rate. Uh, already we have moved three rigs over. I've taken the 3090s out. We have a vlog coming later today starting to cover some of the changes that are being done at the farm. We already have two vlogs recorded. I'll record more today. I do have one edited that's going to come out at 6 p.m. today and one that I need to edit for tomorrow and then I'm going to be recording more out at the farm today as we start switching them over. What we are doing is saying, hey, look, here's this rig, uh, 1660 Supers 12 by, for example, right? We're gonna take the 1660 Supers, here's what their temperatures are at right now, here's what they're hashing at, we're gonna put them into an Octo Miner, we're gonna get it booted up, and then we're gonna check, of course, once again, the, uh, the ambient temperature, and then the exhaust temperature, the temperature of the cards, and we will check the hash rate. What this is hopefully gonna do is give you guys an idea of what these server cases can do for you in your open air setups in the summer. And we are having not only the hottest summer ever in Texas, but I have a smaller building at 1500 square foot, which means that we are having just more and more temperature going down and uh, you know, it's just rough. So it's been like the roughest summer I think I've ever had uh, just personally. So being able to do all this and show you guys though is super exciting. Um, I'm excited to share with you guys this though, because I have 16 rigs online and we are up from like that four to four and a half giga hash to over the past hour being, you know, over five giga hash now for the past six hours, 4.94 giga hash. Uh, we're getting there. So that resulted essentially in yesterday being getting a payout. And remember rigs were down yesterday for most of the day too, as I was reconfiguring them. And we still did 0 0.077 ETH, which was equal to about 119 USDT. So I am over a hundred dollars a day. Finally, I'm working on getting back up over six giga hash a second. Getting over six giga hash a second in the summer in Texas would be absolutely insane. Uh, I think at this time now some of these cards that I've been putting in and we're going to be talking about this too are having some issues still as far as like maintaining uh, hash rate especially during the heat of the day I have some 5700s that I just need to like re-clean all the way I think I'm going to be getting a uh, hypersonic cleaner going through that process and cleaning these up. So that'll be something else that's coming to the channel. Just farm maintenance stuff, tips and tricks and all of that sort of thing. And of course I'll be covering what we did with ventilation here uh, at the current farm when that gets installed, hopefully this week. Now they said they have a master key and they're just gonna go in as soon as she can get the, get the guy uh, going and I'll go in and check it out and try to get that, that uh, figured out and, and talked about, we'll talk about the ambient temperature beforehand. Right now at the heat of the day, we're hitting 51 to 52 degrees Celsius. That is like 129, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. It's absolutely insane, um, but it is what it is. Now, I am also still mining um, solo on Bitcoin Cash, but we haven't hit a block. I'm trying, we'll see if the S10 hits a block. We have it clocked down because it's very hot. I do have an idea to get these temperatures a little bit better. And we'll be talking about that uh, later on. Um, I think in another vlog, I'm gonna be trying to get these temperatures better by adding more fans. And I'll show you guys how we're gonna add more fans as soon as the parts come in. The other thing that's coming to the channel is we do have a Steam Deck coming in. And yes, we're gonna be mining on the Steam Deck as soon as it gets in. I finally got my pre-order approval yesterday. I actually sold an RTX 3090 so I could pay for it because you know, money's tight. I have to sell things to be able to do things for the channel essentially. But the Steam Deck and mining on it is something that I've been wanting to do since it announced. So I definitely am looking forward to getting that in. So stay tuned on the channel for that as well. Let's take a look at the RTX 3090 hash rates as reported by or profitability as reported by what to mine now i was having this conversation yesterday with a few people and it's like 
Yeah, we can say that you're going to get 120 mega hash a second on ETH, but the reality is, is even with copper mods, everything you can do uh, is not necessarily viable on a, in a mining farm or in a setting where you have multiple. I am getting really good numbers right now comparatively uh, on the 3090s now that we've moved them into Octominers. That vlog will be coming out tomorrow. Um or that video will be coming out tomorrow, so you guys can take a look at that. But we'll correct the Zell hash to 110, uh, Kapow to 60, Progpow to 60, and Fero proof of work to 60. And that puts, uh, actually, ETH on nice hash is winning right now at $2.81 a day in revenue and $2.35 a day after power at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Look, what does that mean? That actually means that that actually means that we have retail investors renting to mine ethereum right now and that's a pretty interesting revelation compared to what we normally see with ethereum lately and that's a good sign that means that you will probably start to see more increase in the price of ethereum because this means that people are trying to find another way to get Ethereum uh, before the merge. I think running up to the merge, we're going to have a run up on Ethereum. And that's going to be good for profitability. But keep an eye on these other projects because these, are, uh, these other projects are the ones that are going to take over. Uh, the biggest one, obviously, proof of work wise, that has the most volume is going to be Ethereum Classic. And then some of these other small ones, you want to just keep an eye on their development, see what's going on. We'll try to keep you guys up to date with all of them, you know, as we get closer uh, to the merge, because we'll be having that uh, kind of be an important factor. But Neoxa is still in first uh, if we're mining directly at 276 a day in revenue. And 229 a day after power. Ethereum in, in, in third, well, second, essentially, at 274 a day in revenue. And 228 a day after power. Firo is over $2 a day, too, at $2.47 a day in revenue and 202 a day after power. Ravencoin, 246 a day in revenue and $1.98 a day after power. Cero, 235 a day in revenue and $1.87 a day after power. Ethereum Classic, 219 a day in revenue and $1.73 after power. And it's been one of the highest pumping coins across everything uh, here recently, which is pretty crazy. Conflux, $2.15 a day in revenue and $1.67 a day after power. Z Classic, $1.97 a day in revenue and $1.55 a day after power. Flux, $1.79 a day in revenue and $1.37 a day after power. Bitcoin Gold, $1.74 a day in revenue and $1.32 a day after power. Cortex, $1.69 a day in revenue and $1.31 a day after power. Scrolling down, I guess we could find Ergo down here, $1.53 a day or $1.55 a day in revenue, $1.17 a day after power. Ryo is kind of coming back up over $1.2, $1.53 a day in revenue and $1.16 a day after power. There's some new ones. I have not heard of this one, uh, Cinevate. I have heard of Eternity, Vertcoin, Equilibria, Aeon. Some of these I've definitely heard of. Let's take a look at mining pool stats and see if there's any big changes in hash rates happening on the networks. Not really on Bitcoin, 216 exa hash a second. So still kind of sitting a little low, but really up in, in price. We're up to $22,887. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum is at 932 terahash a second. It's definitely gone up here recently. Ethereum Classic is up one terahash to 25.73 terahash a second. Let's take a look at Flux, which is down to one mega solutions a second. Maybe this news will pump Flux up again, though. Who knows? Let's take a look at Ravencoin. Ravencoin's at still around 2.4 terahash a second. It's fork brother for gaming. Let's take a look at Neoxa. It is actually down a little bit at 187 gigahash a second. Let's take a look at Ergo, which is at 10. It's actually down quite a bit, I think, right now, right? Yesterday. Well, no, I guess that was further back. So compared to yesterday, still up, but 
are still the same, but down from 12 terahash a second to 10 terahash a second and a nice little corresponding difficulty drop on Ergo as well. Mining pool profitability for the last 90 days, Ether mine in first, Crazy Pool in second, Mining Pool Hub in third. Last 60 days, ZET in first, Ether mine in second, Crazy Pool in third. Last 30 days, Mining Pool Hub in first, Crazy Pool in second, F2 Pool in third. Last 21 days, Mining Pool Hub in first, F2 Pool in second, Hive on Pool in third. Last 14 days, Mining Pool Hub in first, F2 Pool in second, Ether mine in third. Last seven days, Mining Pool Hub in first, F2 Pool in second, Ether mine in third. Last three days, Crazy Pool in first, Mining Pool Hub in second, Crux Pool in third. For the last day, Crazy Pool in first, Mining Pool Hub in second, and Nano Pool in third. ASIC mining profitability. As always, checking this out. We should see the E9 at the top, but those shipped on the 15th. I don't know that anybody's necessarily gotten them in. L7's technically first. It is up about $4 a day to $24.11 a day. The KD6 is up as well to $17.97 a day. And the KD5 is probably similar up. Yeah, $11.22 a day on the KD5. Scrolling down to the S19 Pro, it's at $5 a day. A pretty good pump in uh, the S19 Pro at stock settings with 110 terahash. You do have that option of improving it, of course. And don't forget, we have a coupon at Coastal Crypto if you're interested in purchasing ASICs as well as, I guess, some graphics cards. But, you know, I think their 3070 is a little, TI is a little expensive. You can get 5% off with promo code SOAT when ordering, which can be pretty hefty on some of these ASIC miners. So definitely check it out. Um, I'm happy that they're giving us the opportunity to have a promo code that gives a pretty good discount. So right now we're testing the S10 custom build and that's on the Bitcoin Cash solo mining like we showed earlier. Uh, you can build one yourself, which is really interesting. Maybe we'll get that and do a guide. I know they were working on a guide themselves. Uh, Antminer E9 at 13,280, but you can get that 5% off. Plus they do include VAT. So you need to check your prices between your ASIC suppliers. We technically have two on this channel that have been, that are like either an affiliate in the case of Coastal or, you know, a sponsor in the case of BT Miners. BT Miners, I think, has their E9 a little cheaper. Uh, da, 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 or maybe they're out of the E9. Are they out of the E9? No, they are not out of the E9, and it's at 11.8, but I think that. I don't know. I'd have to add the cart. Taxes and shipping calculated. So make sure you get your taxes and shipping calculated between the two. Um, let's see. Wish we could get sales as far as all this goes. I don't think we had any sales on BT miners since the last time we did a video. No, 4,300 still. So there you go. All right. Let's get into questions and answers. Remember, super chats are never required. Always appreciated. First to be read because they're the easiest to read. Tagging at son of a tech in the beginning of the message will highlight it orange and make it easier for me to read. So I will respond to those. And then in addition to that, if you want to support the channel directly where I get the most amount of revenue, check out sonofatech.locals.com. First things first, I think we had Dragon Audio say that he watched a vid of hooking up the ASIC in 50 degree heat the other day. Yep, uh, the things we put up with, and I did do that in jeans. Cake says, ask Summitech, why do you refuse to change the 8% cash back at the ad? It's not true anymore, and you know it. I was waiting on additional, uh, we're supposed to redo all of the ads for crypto.com, and there were some issues, obviously, when Crypto.com was going through their restructuring. So I think like we've acknowledged that that 8% cash back is no longer. And that is a part of the ad that is changed, uh, that needs to change. Um, you know, I can probably record this other, like just the voiceover part of it. And then that would be good. I'll try to do that this evening. Um, but we have talked about that. 
Elliot says, how are you going to uh, cool the Steam Deck? Well, we aren't going to cool it, right? I mean, at the end of the day, maybe we'll figure out a way to cool it additionally. Um, but not, yeah, I, I don't think that, I think we're just going to run it and see what happens. I also have a very cool idea uh, with the Steam Deck that we're going to be doing that I think uh, I don't want to reveal yet. So you'll see later on it's not necessarily about mining uh i don't want to i'm not going to give it up i'm not going to give it up because like if somebody already has a steam deck and steals my idea i'm going to get really pissed i'm going to get really really pissed so i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna reveal it we're just gonna leave it at that i prefer pi thanks for the 99 super sticker boost in that algorithm iatg thanks for the five dollar super sticker boost in that algorithm uh, Mike B says, as some tech, thanks for addressing the angels for sure, man. Like when I see stuff like that, obviously I want to get it corrected and make sure that everybody's on the same page. That's the way crypto goes. And you know, it is what it is. Like sometimes I fall for shit. I try to make sure that we make sure and address that. Ted Park, thanks for the $5 Canadian Super Chat sticker, boosting that Canadian algorithm. Uh, 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 uh. You're watching X-Files, monkey. The Kielbasa says, at so make sure you do at son of a tech because that's the only way it highlights it. But I did catch this because chat's a little slow today says, how much watts are you running and how much CFM are you putting in? So I uh, did not determine the CFM because I did not determine the total uh, building heat. So they did all that. I did not know this was happening until yesterday. So the details on the actual ventilation will be revealed to me this week. I do not actually have any information on it uh, in general. As far as the amount of power we're running, we're around 18 kilowatts right now, somewhere around there, depending on how much equipment I have running. We've gone down as low as like 12 kilowatts when it's gotten really hot. Detroit Irish says, that's time attack. Sorry, I'm late. Can you start from the beginning? No, no. Rewind, good sir. Thanks for being here. Sorry you missed some of it. Live. Ted Park says, as some attack, what wattage do you have uh, your 3090 card set to? I just have the uh, core locked to 1100 megahertz. Um, and that results in about, you know, some of them will try to spike up to like over 300, uh, depending on like what memory they're trying to hit. But most of them are around like that 280. Retro Mike said, at some of a tech ETC node on Steam Deck. You know, I was looking at the uh, Ubuntu installs. It doesn't look too hot for drivers right now. LZ says, as some attack, playing Rust to get Neoxa via proof of game could probably be the highest ROI at the moment, but nothing for people with day jobs. <laughs> yeah, can you make can you make the like 15 bucks an hour playing Rust on Neoxa? That's the question. Mm. Oh, for the Steam Deck, I got you. No, we can get better ROI. I already know how. I'm not going to tell you. Digital Fortress Mining says, Ask Time Attack 3060 Ti Founders Edition for 350 shipped on uh, yay or nay. You, that's going to be up to you. Like, obviously, you can get one brand new for 399 right, at this time. So, I'm going to kind of be a little careful if you're talking about eBay. A lot of people are getting scammed on eBay right now too. So be extremely cautious. Uh, 
Got about two more minutes for questions and answers, and then I'm going to head to the old jujitsu and then get out to the farm and start building more. Um, Thomas, try to do at son of a tech so it turns orange. Luckily, chat slow enough says, uh, why, uh, why does do one discuss BSV? BSV feel anyone who's been doing this a while would be suspicious of Craig Wright. Uh, oh, you mean Bitcoin cash? So why would you, are you asking why I would solo mine Bitcoin cash? Oh, that's purely for a luck section, right? So if we went to lucky monster, right? I only have like what? 23 terahash. So if I went to Bitcoin Cash and then we did 23 terahash, you know, we're at a year. But if I went to like Bitcoin and I did 23 terahash, we're at 159 years. So it's just playing a luck game is all. It's literally just gambling. Um, all I really need to do with the S10 is get it tested, which is what we're doing. Uh, go, go. I don't have predicted hash rates on the steam deck. I have no clue. Simpson says, ask son of a tech, how did the 3090 hybrid kit work out? I only had a, it, it worked out, but it still doesn't have active cooling on the rear of the card. So from a mining perspective, it doesn't help out at all, at least from a, a like an Ethereum or ergo mining, uh, point of view. James PT, thanks for the dollar forty nine cake sticker boosting that algorithm. Detroit Iris says that's time to take you going to vlog when they start doing the ventilation at the farm. Probably, yeah. We'll be covering it. Thomas Blackburn says that's time to take not Bitcoin Cash. The fork from it is called Bitcoin S V. Very difficult to secure with hard wallet. I guess it's SHA two fifty six so you can mine it too. Oh, uh, Bitcoin SV. I don't know. I haven't talked about it because I, it wasn't one that I even like, obviously like Craig, I'm not like, I don't usually get into the, I guess the drama surrounding Craig. Cause like, I think everybody's aware of Craig, right. And like the sketchiness surrounding it and then Bitcoin SV or BSV. I wasn't really, in, uh, I haven't looked in too much if at all. XDX says, ask Simon Tech any experience in flash loans. Uh, I got scammed on a flash loan. I did a video on that. Other than that, uh, not so much, no. When I was trying to learn about flash loans, I got scammed on them. I still need to do more research, obviously. Uh, Derek Ivory says, Ask Simon Tech, are you still spec mining? If so, which ones? Um, no, I'm not currently spec mining everything. Everything is going on to Ethereum as I rebuild everything. So I have very clear numbers and stuff I understand, uh, both just from basically an ease of infrastructure replacement um, consistency. So like... Right now, like nothing's getting bounced around to different uh, algorithms or anything until the farm is up and running uh, good or at least acceptably. And then we'll kind of go from there. I should be able to get to six giga hash uh, once I get everything transferred over is the theory. And that's six giga hash in, you know, 107 degree weather, which would be... Pretty good for where I'm at right now. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bell down below. Share the video out, especially the parts about uh, Aneta Angels, etc. We'll get that all clipped for you guys. 
and uh, out from there so we make sure that everybody is getting the right angels from the right place remember just another just to clarify you're looking at going to skyharbor.io uh, for your aneta angels so make sure that you head on over to there not to the ergo auction house where currently right now all of them are uh, fake now that being said it doesn't mean that there won't be real ones on ergo auction house at some point it just means right now i have not found any actual ones on ergo auction house so i just want to make that clear so that everybody is like kind of in the same uh or on the same page as far as that is concerned be sure to also uh check out this evening's vlog that will be posted at 6 p.m central standard time there will be a premiere for it and more farm, farm vlogs come in all week the primary goal is going to be testing the open air frames and then putting them into octo miners and then showing you guys how much hash rate the uh, the ambient uh, intake versus whatever the exhaust is going to be and all that so it should be a lot of fun content i'll see you next